Greetings, and welcome to Terra Prime Live. My name is Iraq. I am an apprentice with TPLA. I am hosting tonight uh, in for, for Master Anonymous. And tonight's uh, show is going to be about the sound fonts that, uh, that we have on our sabers. Uh, if you're crazy like me enough to duel with, uh, with a saber with a soundboard in it, <laughs> um, well, you can, uh, you can have your cake and eat it too. Uh, we'll talk about that uh, throughout the show. Uh, joining us on the panel tonight, we have uh, we have Master Nero Atoru. We have Jared. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing great. Glad I could uh, make it out for one of these. Yeah, thank you so much uh, again for being here. Um, uh, Jared does have to take off uh, pretty soon, so uh, we're going to get to him uh, fairly quickly. And also uh, joining us is my fellow apprentice, Count Arconis from the UK. How are you doing tonight? I'm uh, doing great, thanks. You rock yourself? I'm doing well. Um, I believe both of us are just getting over a, a cold, even though there's a big ocean in the way. Ah, tis the season, I guess. Hope uh, If you're watching this, I hope you're well. So, uh, tonight again, we are talking about sound fonts and the noises our sabers can make. Um, uh, just a, a couple things before we begin. Uh, I would li I'll just like to reiterate, re, 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 reiterate, uh, here at um, TPLA, we are not, uh, we do not endorse anyone in particular. Uh, we don't have any preferences. Uh, if you deal with LED sabers, if you deal with plastic sabers, the Extendo toy ones, doesn't matter. If it has to do with sabers, we like it. We do not judge. That is for the record. Okay, sorry, I digress. But that is a good digression, I guess. Don't you think, guys? Anyway. Um, and another thing too, uh, yeah, we, we will be talking about uh, different manufacturers' uh, sound uh, sound fonts. We will be talking about sound fonts that are free, and sound fonts that uh, are available for sale. So uh, again, at TPLA Prime, uh, we do, you know, have a strong affinity for open source and Creative Commons, which is uh, which are the licenses we uh, we tend to use for ourselves. But if you do, uh, you know, we we don't uh, we don't condone you know, art theft either. So, if you do come across a sound font that you uh, that you do really like, there are four, five, six bucks a pop, guys. I mean, go ahead and it's worth the money. Once you download it, it's yours. You can do put it on all of your sabers if you want. You can use parts of it. We'll show you how to do that in the show, and uh, yeah, it's up to you. But please support the artists in the community if um, if they are asking for a little bit of remuneration. It's just uh, it's the way to go. Okay, so. We'll, uh, we'll talk about uh, sound fonts now, and uh, we'll start off by giving you a few examples of, uh, of sound fonts and different manufacturers out there. Unfortunately, we uh, can't represent every manufacturer that uh, does exist uh, on the show, but we will uh, do our best to, to give as many shout-outs as we can and, um, and show well, you know, what, what each of us has. So, uh, because Jared uh, does have to go soon, uh, we would... Uh, be honored if you would talk about your lightsabers, Master Nero. Well, I'm honored to be able to talk about them. Um, I just have a few here. Uh, we kind of discussed trying to get a variety of different um, boards and with different you know features and everything. Um, first, I'm going to talk about you know one of my favorite hilts. I like all my hilts actually. It's pretty hard anymore. But uh, this is a Jason Solo. Um, it is. Uh, it was made by M H now Chewbacca on FX Sabers forum, and um, apart from being a very, very nice hilt, um, you know the design's great. Uh, the soundboard in it is a Crystal Shard V one, uh, since it's a Plector board um, made by the same guy who does the Chris, um, Crystal Focus and the uh, Petit Crouton and the Nano Biscot. So. Um, this board was designed for some of the Smiths on uh, FX Sabres forum because um, I guess they were dealing with a lot of people that were saying, you know, I, I really like you know this custom build or, or that or whatever, but I don't really have the money for a, you know full-on crystal focus, you know, you know, crazy build, you know, that, that tends to run up the price. You know, a more expensive board, you end up using more expensive parts and everything like that. Anyway, I digress. Um, the point is, it's a simple sort of like run-of-the-mill board. It does sort of the bare bones. It's it's got this one has one sound font. Um, the upgrade, the Crystal Shard V2. Now it's a newer version. It does have two blade colors and two fonts, which is 
great. Um, but this one, this one is very, you know, not not in a bad way, just in a sort of simplistic way where you know it has all the sounds you need, all the clashes, all the you know this and that, uh, the potential for clash on clash, all that good stuff. Anyway, um, this has a stock sound font on it. Uh, I believe it's the Lightmeet font. Um, this was on it when I got it. I, I actually just haven't gotten to change it. It's one of those things. I actually like the font a lot. Uh, so, I don't know. I just haven't really gotten to change it yet. I, there are a few out there I'd like to try. Link has a uh, Jason Solo font. Uh, Mad Cow has a Jaina Solo font. And they're all, they all sound great. I'd like to uh, try all of them, actually. But um, just haven't gotten around to it. But uh, just to give you an example... Blade in here just for the sake of. I need to play with the sensitivity. It's being a little screwy right now. Sorry about that. But it's going off. The swings are going off a lot. Anyway, anyway it's pretty run of the mill. The, the font itself, uh, very sort of. Not a very. Not a very deep hum or anything like that. Uh, sort of very token Jedi sounds. Uh, generally, sort of like more high-pitched, sort of a more energetic type palm, rather than some of the menacing sounds that they throw in there for sit fonts. So, that's... I don't know. That's one of the things. Uh, I, I do want to point out the ignition sound, because for some reason I particularly like that. It reminds me of... Um, it's the one used in Luke's Return of the Jedi lightsaber, and it's just got such a nice, crisp, you know, energy to it that I really... That's that's the one sound that I tend to pick out for my favorite lightsabers, no matter what. You know, everything else is whatever, but... And you'll hear it on my other sabers, too, a little bit. But um, that's just my preference. I like that sound a lot. Uh, anyway, moving on... I have here two Spark equipped sabers. Um, now the Spark is a different board. It's it's a different um, producer, as a matter of fact. It's by uh, NEC. Um, so it's it goes along with the Igniter. Um, it's a more base uh, more basic board. Um, it has two sound fonts and two colors potentially for it. Um, the new Spark color has more, and that's a little more complicated. But I'm not even an expert on that, so I won't go into that. But I will talk about the ones that I do have, which have two colors, uh, a blaster, uh, blaster lockup sounds, um, and flash on clash, and those are kind of the defining features of it. Um, also, it has saber tracks, which is nice because you can put the music on it and stuff. Again, I haven't gotten to actually tweak these these sound fonts. I have two spark equipped sabers here. Uh, this is the Gladius. Um, this is kind of a it's just one of my favorite hilts. It's, it's excellent. And uh, it's actually one of my fiance's favorite hilts, too. So, um, And this is the Prodigal Son. And this is sort of my baby because I'm a huge Luke Return of the Jedi fan. Um, our, uh, our very own Lucian Kane made this for me, and it's just, it's just awesome. Um, so I'll demonstrate just to show you the sound fonts on these. Uh, Saber Forge has two sound fonts they use very typically on the hero level hilts. They have uh, Father Son, which is a Luke themed hilt, uh, Luke themed um, Luke themed uh, sound font. So, you know, has those sounds, which makes it sort of like a Jedi light side type sound font. And then for the dark side ones, they use um, another one called uh, 500, 501st Commander, which is based on kind of Vader's. Um, and, it's, and it's neat. It's, it's, it's you know, Definitely a little more. You can hear it in, in the Gladius. I'll, I'll show that first to give you an idea. So. Saber Forge Duel Phase. That's when it boots up and you ignite it. So this is Father Son. It's very kind of calm and you know Jedi like. Um, So, 
I like that one. It's nice. I have it's one of the reasons I haven't bothered changing it. If I got a font and I went, uh, then I would swap it out. But uh, honestly, there I've had a couple good ones. So the other one, father, son. there's father son, and five hundred five hundred one commander. So this is the their sort of dark side font. If you get a red blade or something, they'll usually include this unless you specify something else. Now it's nice. It actually has kind of a deep hum to it. It's actually pretty cool. I don't know if it comes out well on the on the uh, webcam, but it, it it has that kind of very different hum to it. It's a little more menacing, a little more ominous. The sounds are just a little bit different. Anyway, that's that. That kind of gives you an idea of those two in their standard standard setups, I guess. Um, I can't speak for all Saberforge setups. I don't know how they typically do it, but I, from what I've seen from, of most people's and of mine, uh, those are your two uh, light and dark side fonts, specifically. And I, you could probably ask for others, but um, what I find interesting, this is the last one, I'll, uh, I'll shut up after this, but... Um, this is my prodigal son, as I mentioned. Uh, when I got this built, I asked uh, Lucian to put uh, the two colors as green and blue. Uh, green, obviously, because it's Luke's Return of the Jedi, and blue because it was a reference to how his saber was originally supposed to be blue uh, in the initial uh, design of it. I mean, Jedi lightsabers were blue. That was just the way it was. And then they found that it didn't show up well against the Tatooine sky, blah, blah, blah. Along comes a green blade, and Star Wars has changed forever. But long story short, uh, it, it's supposed to be a reference. So they're both, you know, sort of very Jedi colors. It's, it's a Jedi lightsaber. You know, either way, it's a reference to Luke in his, you know, in his becoming a Jedi knight. So I... I I didn't really specify because, like I said, I'm not the pickiest when it comes to these things, but um, uh, Lucian did put some awesome sound fonts on here. It's it's really just the Father, Son, and 501st, but he tweaked the 501st. I, sometimes fonts have different sounds that you can substitute in a, you know, they'll have a particular package and, you know, it's say, you know, if you have 12 sounds on this, you know, that like fit on the saber, they'll have 20 sounds, you know, because you can switch out, you know, a few clashes here. Oh, I don't like these, this clash. I want this clash instead. Oh, you know, I don't like this uh, ignition sound. I'd rather have this. So a lot of times you get that. So it makes it very customizable, even with just one sound font, you know. Um, so I think that's cool. And in this case, it actually turned out really well because the father, father son is the same. The 501 Commander the hum is just totally different uh, at least at least to my ears um, definitely not as ominous definitely more middle of the road type uh, but you know different than the father son which is good because I probably wouldn't want to the same font on the, the spark of the hill um, but it's good, because both of them are very you know, Jedi-sounding, which is a little bit subjective anyway. Um, but but they suit it. You know, it's, it's good. It, it fits the purpose that I had for the saber. And, and I guess if I had to say, in conclusion, that if I had to say something about, because uh, i got to get going, um, sound fonts, uh, they're, they're definitely a personal expression type thing. They're a completely different person to person, as you'll see with uh, E-Rock and, and Arcanus. Um, they'll, they have very different tastes, you know, than I do and than each other does uh, in terms of sounds and styles and all that. So that comes into play. And 
everybody tweaks their sound fonts to be a little different and, and you know puts a little different set of them on there. You know, you might you, you you know the nice thing about the spark is that you have two. So you can have a kind of duality. You can have a light side and dark side. You can have you know two dark sides that are slightly different, maybe one that's a little more subtle, you know. And uh, for you know, I'm not even in, like a kind of a, a music dork and I and I think it's really cool. So I mean I'm sure, you know, um, I, I know E Rock is big into music, so I'm sure that's why he just you know, loves tinkering with these sound fonts. Um, so so it is nice. That's one of the best things about these customizable fonts that you know we're lucky to have with our you know Saber community is that you can just mix and match. I like this sound, I like that sound, I want this, you know, I want want it to sound like uh, you know you know anything. Anything you can imagine is pretty much possible. Um, so that's, that's about it. I don't know if you guys have anything to ask you'd like me to. No. Um, no, Jared, thanks. That was a, a very awesome display of... Uh, sorry, I just love that Jason, uh, Jason solo hill. That's just so awesome. Yeah, there it is. I, I do I love do. it. It's nice. It's nice. Oh. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> there you go. I got my paper towel. Anybody, uh, anybody out of um, <laughs> Anyway, yeah. Uh, just for the drool, of course. Uh, this is a family show. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um. Anyway, Jared, uh, thank you so much uh, again for uh, for joining us tonight too. Uh, no problem. Time, so. I'm I'm happy to do it when I can. So uh, I'll I'll catch you guys later. Uh, hopefully on the next. Keep you later. Uh, Excellent. Just take care. Have a good weekend. Okay. So. Uh, next on, which it patently is. <laughs> yeah, I think everything's good though, uh, <laughs> and we are back on. I think, yep, we are back. So sorry about that, everybody. Uh, if you are rejoining us again, uh, thank you so much. We just dropped out for some reason, so uh, hopefully everything is uh, working well with uh, with Google Hangouts here. And uh, again, apologize for the technical difficulties. So, um, anyways, uh, we were just about to uh, to continue on here with Count Arcanus, and we were just about to learn about the well-weathered Venom. <laughs> Love that saber, by the way. <laughs> yes, indeed, the, the, the wonders of Google Hangouts. Yeah, this is my Sedforge Venom, which, as I was saying before, it has... I've had this for just over a year, and it's got the... what at the time was the entry-level um, soundboard, which is the Neutrino, uh, I'm not sure who makes the Neutrino board, uh, to be honest, but it is it is a fairly basic board. It's got a kill key Neutrino version one uh, in zero. it, and um, single single color, uh, red red LED, unsurprisingly. And uh, it um, you know it has some um, you know some basic sort of features Neutrino to it. Version one. It doesn't have the flash on clash that a lot of the more expensive boards have. There it goes. And uh, pretty <laughs> pretty bright. It's got a, um, obviously, red blade. It's, this is the stock font that comes on the, the Neutrino. It's a very sort of growly, sort of guttural sound, as you can hear, which, of course, suits the red blade perfectly, and obviously the styling of the saber. It has your your basic sort of swings, a couple of different clash sounds. As I say, it doesn't have lock up or um, flash and clash or anything like that, which um, is a shame. But again, it, it is intended to be a fairly sort of entry level board. Pretty solid, pretty sturdy. Has a nice sound. It's nice and loud. I. I you know, I like I like this. I have heard um, boards that are louder than this, setups that are louder than this, but this one does the job quite nicely. One of the fun things has quite a fun little sort of um, fade off, fade on sort of thing as well. One of the fun things about this is a lot of the 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 more expensive boards, the higher end boards, you kind of hook them up to the computer to to change things. This is all just in the saber. So really all you have to do is you hold the button down Illumination disabled. Select optical intensity. and then what it does is it gives you options 
for what you can do with it. So, for example, One, two, three, four, five. you kind of scroll through when you find the setting you want. Select optical frequency. One. You, you hold the button down. Now, one, as you can see, is a solid color. One of the nice sort of little Easter eggs with this board is you can actually set a blade flicker. Two. Now, again, how much my camera is going to pick this up is debatable. Three. But it actually flickers. Four. And you can set it to different Five. things. The, the higher up the number you go, the faster it flickers. One. And then one, of which is what I usually have it set on, is the solid color. Select sound intensity one. And you have a couple of different volume settings. One, two, and two. One, two. I usually set it on two. Select impact sensitivity one. Now this is basically when you when you clash it, it's how sensitive it is to clashes. So you can go from one, two, three, four, five. One. To be fair, I usually have it on Select motion one. Sensitivity. one. This is your swing sensitivity. Same idea. Two, three, four, five, one. Again, I set it on one. All settings saved. And sound comes back on. As you can see, even with one, it's fa it's fairly mad. Um, so, I've tried it on some of the higher settings, it's utterly crazy, uh, it, it, a, bit, <laughs> a little, bit, little bit like Master Nero's um, Jason Solo, it just, it'll, it'll swing when it's stood still, <laughs> it's, it's a bit crazy, so it's definitely better to have it on the lower settings, you don't really need it on the, on the higher settings particularly, but it's nice to have everything in, you know, in the saver. And so you're not messing around with, you know, USB cables and all that business. But it does mean that you basically, you've just got the one font that is in, in the hilt. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's a, just a quick overview of the, uh, of the, the Neutrino board. Oh, excellent. Well, that's, um, that's pretty cool. That's, uh, for, yeah, for what it is, though, it sounds awesome. And, uh, yeah, I didn't, I thought you could modify it, but, uh, nope, I, I've learned something today. Um, very cool. So, um, so moving on, um, and what? Uh, why nobody else talked about it? Because it's the only uh, only type of soundboard that I actually have right now. Uh, this is um, well. This right here is an uh, an Ultra Sabers Guardian. I'm going to show the Obsidian soundboard, and if I'm not mistaken. Oh, I actually uh, have my Overlords right here. Uh, normally, it's it's in the saber hilt and you know it's usable, but um, the obsidian soundboard is uh, kind of how big they are, an inch wide and a couple inches long. Uh, it's the um, it's the soundboard that uh, Ultra Sabers uses, and it has a, a USB connection right there, so it uh, allows you to change the the settings um, and the sound fonts uh, with a, a USB connection and uh, some software that. Uh, you must use to do that. So the uh, the Obsidian, uh, you can also change the uh, the volume, just like you said. But uh, all of those settings are all built into the uh, the software. Um, once you get it on the saber, it's basically yours to use until you change it again using the software. So uh, I'm demonstrating right here. This is uh, this is my own font actually. Uh, this is what I call Kit Fisto. Um, I don't know why I called it Kit Fisto. Somebody asked me for a Kit Fisto themed font, so I, I thought, what the heck, why not? Let's do this. Um, now the, um, I basically wanted a Jedi hum. Um, Kit Fisto, uh, help me out. He's, he's, um, he's a Nautilus? Yeah, uh, Nautilus. Cool. So yes, obviously he's from a, a marine environment. Um, couldn't think of a way to, to incorporate that in there, so I just decided to make it kind of a lighter pitch sound. Um, yeah, same font. Um, so it has uh, 
what I uh, just because of uh, the way what I like to do with uh, with TPLA, I like to you know I like the fighting. So I wanted uh, quick clashes against other lightsabers, so that the clashes are. with the swings. Quick swings, quick... Uh, yeah, I wanted this uh, to, to work with uh, Form 2 Makashi and not be long, broad swings. So if I did that. Um, and the locker. It's this flicker between silver and green. Of course, near impossible to see on a camera, but uh, same with the, uh, the blue here. Easy to see it. So maybe we can get some binaural action happening here. Got to phase in and out at some point so you can see it. But yeah, being the same sound, you kind of get stereo. So, yeah, to, uh, yeah, seven thirty. We'll have time to uh, we'll have time to fix that tonight. Oh, yeah, and then of course the the power down. Is, uh, Standard power down. Uh, so, yeah, the, um, the obsidian, of course, um, we uh, there are, I think, what, six or seven fonts offered by default uh, with an Ultra Saber. Um, if you go to Saber Forum, uh, there are, <laughs> I would say, over 30, 35, 40 fonts that have been uh, made and put on the site uh, free to download. For Obsidian, they're already uh, specified for LSU. Some of them actually contain uh, the wave files that you can change the bitrate for for other savers, but uh, uh, you'll mainly find the LSU files that are suitable for the Obsidian soundboard. Here, so, uh, but if you go to saberforum.com in the Obsidian section, um, that's what my YouTube channel's reviews are, are mainly based on. Really, there are those uh, those free sound fonts that you can download. So, uh, yeah, check it out. There's there are way more. Most of them are awesome, uh, just to let you know. So you can pick and choose between them. Uh, you don't always have to put the uh, the same set of uh, the same set on. You can uh, say like uh, like what Jared was saying earlier. He likes the Return of the Jedi, but with the uh, Luke. But say you wanted uh, the Empire Strikes Back startup sound for the lightsaber. I know he would want the Luke's uh, snap hiss uh, green. Thing, but anyway, let's just hypothetically go there and. Uh, what you can do is use uh, the startup font from the the one, and then the rest of the font set from the uh, from another font. I guess I keep the general. So the possibilities are quite endless, except for the amount of space that uh, that you can hold. So uh, yeah, the Obsidian uh, basically has flash memory on board. Uh, you plug it in, you change the settings, off you go. Uh, there are other soundboards out there. It is worth mentioning that uh, use micro SD cards, which means you pop the little tiny micro SD card out. Uh, so awesome. I mean, you just, <laughs> you don't have to plug in the USB cord to the, the board every time, which I don't mind doing. I'm used to it, but it'd be much, much easier to pull out an SD card. But anyway, that's uh, that's not what I get to do. Um, yep. Anyway, USB works for me. But yeah, I'd say it would be much easier to modify things that way. Uh, other savers come with what's known as a rice port, where it's like a, a an eighth inch audio jack, sort of, and you plug in a cable, which basically is a USB cable, and you connect that to your computer, and then uh, use the software to change. I don't know if you change the um, the sound fonts particularly. Yeah, you probably can, uh, and the colors as well in, in a lot of cases too. So, yep. The um, if your Saber does come with software, definitely plug it in and check it out because you'll get the most out of it that way. So, um, 
Right. Uh, Jared also mentioned uh, earlier, uh, basically gave us the synopsis of our show, which is awesome. Um, he talked about how your sound fonts are basically your fingerprints. You, there, there are really no wrong answers uh, to, to these sound fonts. Um, let's see. I do have sound fonts installed on my, uh, my computer right here. Uh, what I'm going to do is mute my camera. Actually. Give me a second here. At least. Oh, let's see. Gary? <laughs> Sorry. Um, just going to get my second camera operating in here, and then uh, what we'll do is we'll uh, just do a trade-off. Just going to do a, uh, a quick run-through of, uh, of what else you can do with, uh, with sound fonts. Go to my drive here and open up these sound fonts. Yeah, okay, so I have, uh, I have 58 items in this folder, just to let you know. There, there are a plethora of, of sound fonts to, to choose from. I'm going to activate my camera here. Okay, yeah, so just wanted to mute my microphone there. And then uh, what I can do is... up a little bit. For perfection. Okay, so now you're looking at me, looking at me. Um, that is silly, but it'll work. Anyway, I'm just going to open up a few uh, sound fonts here. close everything there. You can just stare at my cat. There's you. Okay, so um, let's see. We'll, uh, we'll just go and, uh, and peruse some fonts here. I'm going to get uh, one of these Obsidian launchers open so I can at least hear what's going on. So we're just going to do a, a tour of a few of these things. Um, sorry, folks. Obsidian sound fonts. There we go. Okay, so um, let's see. Um, we'll give some props to uh, to Ninja Jesus here. Um, we'll go to the episode three font. Uh, so uh, as you notice with uh, Jared's sabers, uh, uh, he has a, an auxiliary button on that saber on a couple of those sabers that have uh, blaster blocking, um, which <coughs> you can actually get sound fonts. <coughs> Repeater rifle, not bad. So, uh, right, I digress. Uh, also, with uh, with your saber, if um, if you have uh, a recharge port with a kill key, uh, what will happen is uh, you, you can notice that um, you take the battery out and the saber loses its power. Or with a, a recharge port, you put the kill key in, and the same thing happens. It's like taking a battery out. You cut the power off of the saber. But when you pull it out, the soundboard once again receives electricity from the batteries, and you get what's known as a boot up. And if all is well with your saber, and you reconnect the electricity, you get what's known as the boot up sound. And on this episode three here, uh, we have four four boot up sounds to choose from. Yeah, that's what your uh, that's what your lifesaver does when you plug in the batteries. It's pretty cool. Another example. Do not hesitate. Show no mercy. Yeah. A couple of serious quotes there. Twisted by the dark side, young Skywalker. From Yoda. Oh, what the heck? There's only four of them. Let's hear the fourth one. There's somebody out there twisted my rubber. Arm. Yes, master. Right. <laughs> right. So those are the boot sounds. Um, so when you turn your saber on, the uh, first thing that happens, of course, is the power on. Uh, so you have that startup sound, that famous 
Ben Burt sound. Ben Burt did all of the lightsaber sounds for the Star Wars trilogies. All of these sounds were inspired by him. Uh, let's just give credit where credit is due here. So props to Ben Burt for being an awesome sound innovator. Anyway, this is a this is what's been inspired by it. So that's just the, the classic startup sound. Um, as Ninja Jesus shows here with his episode 3 font, uh, he gives you a couple options just in case you don't like that one. Or you would prefer a different one. That one's a little bit longer and draw more drawn out. That one's a little bit quicker going on. So, you can tweak your tastes. Um, once everything starts up, you get your hum. In this case, we have one hum, so it sounds like this. Put a Facebook thing in the middle. Um, so what your uh, your lightsaber will do is it'll just loop that uh, that uh, that audio track uh, until you do something. Uh, say you swing it, you get your swing sounds. <coughs> quickly. Uh, if you hit something, you ha your saber will randomize up your clash sounds. There. There's a few examples there. Um, so you get into saber to saber contact and uh, you decide to press the lockup button. Never gets old. And finally, there's another lockup for you. Cool. Alright, and then you're done locking up, you destroy your enemy, and right, now you got to power your saber off. So this one here has three power-offs. Nice and quick. A little bit more drawn out. Different style altogether. So, that's, uh, and then what you do is you notice your saber has your, uh, I don't know if you can see this properly, yep. Your saber has the, um, the settings right here. I don't have a saber plugged in right now, but when you do, um, these become active. You bring your saber, uh, your saber individual items over to, uh, to what you need to do. And once all of the slots are loaded, you go to your soundboard and you write the sound files. Which is just up there. Just click on it. There, I don't know. It's a terrible webcam shot. Sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen, if you're watching, but uh, it's horrible. <laughs> Why didn't anybody tell me it was so bad? Uh, all right, there we go. So, yeah, you can't even see it because it's grayed out, but uh, right sound files is right there. Anyway, let, let's move on a little bit here. Um, all right, so you... Um, I'm just going to close this down. We'll go back to our regularly scheduled program up here. All right. Um, cool. Okay. So, yeah, uh, Gary, uh, do you have any questions uh, about that? No, I mean, it's, it's, it's um, to be honest, I mean, I have an obsidian board myself uh, um, in my, my Scorpion uh, Sabre. Um, it's not something, because I'm a little bit... Um, timid, I guess, when it comes to sort of technology and these kind of things. Um, so it's not something I've really played with a, a great deal. I mean, I have gone through, you know, various different things, looked at different sound fonts that are available. You know, there are, as you were saying before, I mean, there are an absolutely huge number of them. Everything ranging from sort of Sidious style fonts to Dooku style fonts to various sort of Jedi ones, obviously with the popularity of things like the Force Unleashed computer games. There's a, a plethora of, you know, Dark Dark Apprentice, Star Killer type fonts as well. So there's a huge amount of stuff you can do, and you, uh, you know, as, as both yourself and, and and Jared were saying earlier on, you can obviously mix and match them. So if you have um, a particular preference for fast swings or slower swings, or you, you know, or, or lockups with particular, you know, sort of sounds in them, um, you know, Force Lightning in lockups seems to be quite popular. Um, you know, you can do pretty much whatever you want with them, which is, you know, is a kind of a fun thing. Um, I think, you know, if I was to ask sort of questions about this, I mean, 
what would you say the sort of sort of you know things to watch out for pitfalls are when when you know when you're you know writing fonts to the Obsidian board? Definitely. Um, so with the, with an Obsidian board, um, rule number one is always stuff charged batteries in there. Um, the Obsidian board can take a, a fair hit of juice. I mean, uh, we're running 7. Point, uh, what, 7.4 setups, aren't we? Uh, 2, 3, 4, 7, yeah, 7.4. Um, not too shabby. But uh, with, uh, with the LED burning a lot, and uh, say your batteries are half-drained, it could take a little bit of time to, uh, to get the font actually on the saber. So um, if your battery is drained to the point where it's just not quite strong enough, it uh, you could actually damage the electronics. Um, I would say that if it, your soundboard doesn't have uh, a micro SD card, that would be the same, same issue that you might face. But most of the time, you just pop out the SD card modify your computer at your own time or even elsewhere from your saber, which is kind of cool. Um, but yeah, there's uh, there's that and um, yeah, there's a, uh, you have to, if you have an obsidian board, you have to go to saber forum. Uh, there is a set uh, order of procedures to get the, uh, to get the saber connected to your computer. Uh, once you get it down once, it's like riding a bike, you, you, you never forget it. And when you do, it's like, oh, yeah, sorry, turn the saber on, then plug it in, then turn the program on. No problem. So just a, a couple things to look out for, but um, there are instructions. Um, you know, if you're going to buy an LED lightsaber like this, hit the forum. I mean, get the information uh, that you need. Find out about these things because, um, you know, it's not just like going to Toys R Us and, and picking up a, a even a, a nice $50, $50 replica with a, an LED light strip in it that's breaks on our, the first impact, but for a kid, it's awesome. Um, sounds not too shabby on it either. On the other hand, um, yeah, I, I kind of like the fact that I have a sound font that I, I sourced with uh, open source sounds from the internet, uh, threw it in Audacity, and Audacity, what is that you say? Well, let me show you here. Um, Audacity is a program that you can use. I'm just going to switch cameras here. I'll do it that way. That's cool. Um, Audacity is right here. It is a, um, yeah, Audacity is a free-to-use program. You go type in Audacity, that's A-U-D-A-C-I-T-Y. And, um, you know, it's been made by, um, yeah, the Audacity support team, SourceForge. It's uh, fully open source. So, again, we like that kind of thing here. Uh, and what Audacity allows you to do is to uh, manipulate uh, sound files. So what I'm going to do here quickly in the brief amount, in 10 minutes, okay, I challenge accepted. I have to do this in 10 minutes here. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to modify the Kit Fisto theme or the Kit Fisto themed uh, font, and I'm going to make it a little bit more dark side-ish. We're going we're gonna to have a little fun with this. So. The first thing that we need to do is let's start with the hum. All I'm going to do is drop this in. Oh yeah, I got to import this. Of course. I don't have the. Uh, I. <laughs> Oops, it's raw data. Sorry. Import raw data. I don't know if you can see that. And then I have this on the desktop. There we go, and we'll go to the hum, and this is what we want. We want 16-bit, we want mono, and if this is good, this is good. All right, get her done. So let's take a listen. All right, so that's the hum. First thing we do is... We select all, and I am going to simply drop this down in pitch. I'm going to change the pitch. I'm going to go down. Hmm. And here's where we get to have a little bit of fun. Let's just do it this way. It sounds like a duck flatulating. Let's keep trying here. Uh, like a helicopter. 
helicopter. Sounds a little sluggish. Let's try just down two little points here. Okay. Happy medium at three. Let's take it. All right, so... I know it it seems kind of simple. Should I I'll, I'm just going to exaggerate it actually. Let's just exaggerate it. So I'm going to undo that whammo. There's the original. And then we'll change pitch down 4. Let's live dangerously. I like it. Next thing we do is uh, I know that my Obsidian board likes 48 hertz, 4800 hertz. Likes it mono and 16 bit. Next, we export it as a wave. Put a new folder. Dark side. Recut. Let's do this. Right. Hi. Now, let's see, we got eight minutes here. Um, okay, fill that. Next, I'm going to do the boot. I don't care. I'm going to have to import them all, aren't I? <laughs> Next, Clash. Let's just do the Clash. It's good. Excellent. Modify this already. Oh, yeah. Um, Hey, Gary, feel free to put in some uh, some nice um, uh, commentary if you wish. Uh, cool. One thing one thing that did occur to me actually that while you you know while you're searching for what you're you know you're going to be uh, changing, um, do you think it's worth pointing out that if you're putting together your own sound font and you're adjusting things, you know, um, would you say you'd want to? Yeah, if you've got a set of sounds you you're altering, would you want to say say you're dropping the pitch of them, drop them by the same amount, so that you get a kind of a consistent sound from home to swing to clash? But it's funny you should mention that, my friend, because uh, what I'm doing right now is I'm importing um, the raw data again. I have to do it that, that way. That's okay. So what I imp I do is I import it, I select the whole thing, and um, the next thing we do is, instead of just going effect, change pitch, and doing it again, I can just hit control R, which is repeat change pitch. It does exactly what you did the last time. You can simply export it. Clash three, recut. Cool. All right. So uh, exactly right. Um, if you do it to one, you really should do it to all of them because um, consistency... If you're inconsistent, I've noticed it really does show through on the uh, when you do have it on the saber. The saber is very unforgiving. It's a it's a tiny little speaker. Um, you know it um, it it really brings out that the clicks and pops if you don't uh, make a loop loopable, uh, if you will. <laughs> um, it's like it's like high definition television. You know the the, the makeup guild people really, really got up in arms about that because they couldn't uh, they couldn't BS their way through uh, through TV episodes anymore because high def showed off uh, just how you know you could see the spirit glue on on people. Uh, they had to do a good job on on all of the scenes. So same with this. Uh, the more time you spend on it, the the better sound you're gonna get. I've just done the clashes here. I'm just going to do seven clashes. I don't care. We're not going to do the whole thing. I'll do it later. So, uh, select everything. We're just going to repeat this change pitch. I'll just get the base files. Uh, that'll give us hopefully enough time. I, I doubt we'll be able to uh, to get it on a saber because that usually takes upwards of 15 to 20 minutes. But <laughs> but um, anyway, let's let, let's just leave it at that. I'll um, I'll just export this uh, wave here. We need the proper setting. Very good. Cool. I've always been meaning to do this anyway. Uh, so, yeah, let's just get out of Audacity here. Uh, you have changed. Yep, no, just go ahead. And then 
here are my WAV files. I don't know if you can see that up here. Can you lock it on the um, the, the, the cam that's on your screen? Oh, good idea. Yeah, I talk and that'll change. Oh, it doesn't matter. I talk, it switches anyway. <laughs> Lovely. All right, sorry, guys. Here. Do I have uh, WAV files? Uh, what I'm going to do is quickly throw up the, uh, the LSU converter here. The LSU is uh, the converter here is what Ultrasabers gives you to convert your sound fonts to LSU, which is lightsaber something. Um, I used to know. Not really that important anyway. Um, and users. All right. All right, guys, I'm a little too many things at once here. There we go, desktop. Uh, here we go. And, yeah, so the LSU is a proprietary compression uh, that, that uh, the, like, the sound fonts use for ultrasavers and the Obsidian. Dark side, here we go. So what we will do is uh, this, I don't know if you can even see this, but I'm just going to select them all. And it's as easy as going mono 48k 16 bit. What did I do? Did I not mono? No, it worked. But I went too quickly on a couple of them, I see. And that those error messages are important because as you can see, clash two was not done. So I would no nope, clash one was not done. So I would have to do that again. And and clash three. So those two I screwed up. But we have the LSU files here. Uh, what we'll do is we'll get the, um, the launcher back open here. And to my desktop. Need it'll only show you the LSU files. simply by lowering it four pitches um, chromatically in, in Audacity. Yeah, I'm just going to mute myself here. Do I have a bat in the cave? Sorry about this. Okay. Oh, anyway, um, so that's, uh, yeah, once you, uh, and you can record these things using a microphone. Um, Anything. You can use a synthesizer and just mess with sounds and add all sorts of effects to them. Uh, you can pull clips off of movies. You can put music on these things. Yes, you can. Anyways, it's been done. wasn't going to demonstrate that because we're, you know, A, we're out of time right now, and uh, B, well, we'll, uh, yeah, we'll just cut to the chase here and say you can do anything you want with those sound fonts, but... Uh, what you uh, what you put on your saber is is ultimately up to you, and um, you know take your time with it. Pick uh, pick what you like. Um, most of us are using stunt sabers, which means uh, soundboardless sabers or or just uh, light and and hilt. But if you do um, if you do use a saber with sound in it, by all means personalize it because uh, just because you can. Um, yeah, and, and hit us up in the Exile forum. Um, or even just below if you have any questions about sound fonts uh, or anything else. Um, yeah, so on uh, Gary, do you have any uh, last minute words? Again? No, I think, you know, um, I mean, I think it's really the only limit is your own sort of creativity. But the point you made earlier on, I think, is worth reiterating, which is, in a sense, the more time you take in creating your sounds and getting them exactly the way you want and making them match up, the you know, the better that's going to work on your saber and the more the more effective it's going to be. Absolutely. You'll just get more out of the experience. Um, oh, and uh, one last, last, last minute thing here. Uh, John Villeneuve on, um, on our Q&A. Uh, 
posted a question probably earlier. <laughs> here. So he asks, I have a stunt saber from Ultra Sabers. Could a soundboard be installed in one of those, or would it have to depend on the hilt? Uh, very quickly, uh, if you have a V2 Ultra Saber, uh, it uh, can take smaller soundboards, uh, econo boards. Uh, if you have a V3 hilt, then it will take uh, most of the soundboards, uh, if not all of them that are out there. Uh, sky's the limit, basically. But uh, the uh, the obsidian boards only go in the V3s, John. I uh, hope that answers your question. Uh, so uh, thanks for asking it, by the way. And, um, yeah, if you see the Q&As on the side here, that uh, means we want you to ask us stuff, uh, whether it's me or whether it's Master Anonymous um, posting the show. Uh, but anyway, on behalf of Master Anonymous and TPLA, uh, we would like to thank you for joining us tonight. Um, again, if you have any, uh, if you do have any uh, questions, you can always drop by uh, our Facebook group. Uh, you can catch us uh, on um, uh, the uh, Imperial Royal Arms. We have a, a forum there as well. And yeah, just uh, just Google TPLA uh, Terra Prime Lightsaber Academy if you're uh, if you're looking to hook up with us. So uh, or connect. Anyway, uh, on behalf of uh, TPLA. Thank you again, uh, Darth. Uh, Darth, that's your outside of this organization. Name. Count Arcanus. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. And uh, thanks for watching, uh, watching again, and may the Force be with you. Happy sabering. Enjoy those spots.